book covers or multiple page publications. Book covers have to grab your attention. They need to tell you something about the content. Catalogs fall into a slightly different uh, category. The covers indicate what's in them with the hope that you'll pick one up to order from. Magazines are more like books. They reveal what's in them by listing what the articles are so that you will buy one. Supermarkets, grocery stores, they place magazines right up by the checkout counter so you're going to see them while you're standing in line and you get to read the tantalizing article names. Covers just don't tell you the name of the book. They have to give you some clue to what the book is about. There are different kinds of books and they're going to have different looks to the cover designs because they're going to reflect what type of book that they are. Reference books, children's literature, adult literature, nonfiction, textbooks, limited edition fine press, or image heavy books that are your coffee table books that you put out. So really they're a lot to impress people. But we don't have so many bookstores anymore. But what is it that you look for when you're looking online for a book in an online bookstore? Do you look for a particular author or do you shop by genre? What draws you to a particular book? Do you read the reviews first or do you pick a book because it was recommended by someone you know? Chances are, unless you're looking for a particular title, it's the cover art that's going to draw you in. Old books were very often bound in leather. Others were in cloth. Leather and cloth could be embossed with ink or even gold leaf. They were decorative, but generally those didn't reflect a whole lot about the book. They were works of art, but people didn't rely on the cover to tell the story. People heard about books word of mouth, or there was recommendations made by a bookshop owner, or you recognized the name of the author. By the 1800s, many books were bound with hard covers that were made out of cloth over cardboard, and these books could be decorated and heavily embossed. Although the images may not always reflect the content of the book, you have to admit that these could be very striking. But what could differentiate these books from others? Without knowing beforehand what the book contained, you didn't pick up much for information just by looking at the front of it. Ah, well, you can't judge a book by its cover. Well, maybe it was time that you could. Here are two versions of the book, The Old Man and the Sea. The one was first printed in 1952 with a dusk jacket depicting a fishing village and a subsequent printing with a picture of a fisherman fishing on a whale's tail. Two interpretations of the same book. What is a dusk jacket? Most of you know what the jacket is. It's that paper wrapper around a hardcover book and it protects the book. It's paper so it can be printed on easier and it keeps the book cover itself clean. It also contains information on the back as well as on the two fly leaves that fold around the cover. Things like other books by the same author or by the same publisher or reviews, the price, a lot of times there's the bio of the author. Here's an example. This is a book cover for Aragon. It's a summary of the book on the front fly. A short bio for the author is on the back fly. The back of the book tells a bit about it while the spine holds the required information which is the author's name, the book title, and the publisher. Now, even though we don't find as many bookstores to shop in anymore, we still want to be able to judge a little bit about the book by the cover. There are so many choices. The attractive book cover may be the only thing that makes you stop and read what the book is even about. A book cover is a lot like a movie trailer. It contains clues about the content. You react to the cover before you select the book and read it. Sometimes the author carries enough weight that all you need is their name, or the name of the book can be played with and it becomes enough. Title-driven or author-driven covers still offer a visual graphic element that will attract the viewer and add to the meaning of the title or the reputation of the author. You've read about type-driven designs. 
type driven designs are going to have the predominant element on the cover as the type and the graphics are not as important as the lettering. Image driven, well we just like images. Much like our flyers we have a large graphic and it's supported by the text. And then we have image type synergy where the image and the type work together and they can actually become one in the same like in the Gettysburg Address where part of the image is created by the text itself. Or in this one of the girl who fell from the sky you have the impression of falling because the text is centered and right below each word is the next word. When you design for a book cover you need to know first of all the book's content and the target audience. Why is that important? We need to know what the story is about so we know what we can put on the cover and we need to know whether this is for an adult, for a child, is this a specialty book that is going to be attractive to only a certain segment of the population, is it of general interest. We need to know something about who the intended audience is going to be so that we can then, next thing, create visual interest that attracts the attention of our entire of our intended audience. You arrange the title, the author, and the image in a clear visual hierarchy so that the viewer's eye is directed across the cover of the book. You need to make sure that your type and image will work well together so that they support each other. You want to express the essence of the book without giving too much of it away. So you want something that's going to be meaningful to the story without giving the ending away. You might want to suggest the genre. Is it science fiction? Is it a mystery? That's going to influence your design. Be unique, be different from the competition so that you stand out on the shelf. You also need to decide your spine for impact as well as for readability because very often that's all you're going to see is the spine. Remember that your back cover and spine are part of that entire design. It's important what goes on the back as well as what's on the front. And again, as I said, sometimes the spine is the only thing you're going to see when it's on a shelf. For your composition, consider your positive and your negative space. A book cover is one of those places that you can actually use symmetry and have it be fine. Being symmetrical on a book cover is okay. Consider what your focal point or where your focal points are or what you know how you're going to pass through from point A to point B to point C. Movement. Is there movement or is there a rhythm pattern? What are your colors that you're using? Do you need to subdivide to portray multiple ideas on a cover? Consider layering with transparencies, your balance, and the rest of your elements and principles. If you're doing a redesign of an existing book cover, consider the original artwork. Target the appropriate contemporary audience because you're going to be updating to somebody newer. A book cover that was designed 30 years ago is not going to attract the same type of audience in today's market. So sometimes an older book cover should be updated to attract new readers. Is there a revised content or revi new artwork perhaps that's been included inside? Make sure that your author's name is clear and readable. If you're designing for a book series, you need to develop a template and maintain positions for the type. You can change out your images depending on the story, but if you have a series that you're going to have the same characters in and it's written by the same author, you need to keep a feel throughout the series so that we know that it's a continuation and that it's something that we want to go back and purchase the next one in the series. 
This is a short lecture, but we are going to talk about your assignment. 